Hey guys, Linda Sutherland on. I scoped a little while ago about the history program we used, and I promised you that I was going to hop back on in a minute to look at our timeline and also a before shot of our schoolroom before I work on getting it organized. Hey, hello, Mary. I just saw your scope from yesterday. It was fantastic. Great stuff included, uh, even more than what you shared on Brave Schoolers yesterday. So thank you for that scope. I really enjoyed it. All right, guys, I'm going to flip the camera around. Oh, I keep forgetting to introduce myself. My name is Lena Sutherland, homeschool mom of seven. I blog over at Homeschooling Without Training Wheels, H-S-W-O, Training Wheels. Yeah, my hair. Thanks. Okay, let me flip this around. So, first of all, the way I've done our timeline, we have in our schoolroom, um, the ceiling kind of slopes, so it's kind of normal height over here, and then it gets taller. And so, oh, thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. So what I did was I kind of did two timelines. So the timeline of like all of history starts over here with creation and it goes, let me see if you can see the numbers and the cobwebs all at the same time. It goes in increments. And these are, by the way, these are sentence strips. They're like the back of a sentence strip that I used for the numbers. So I did all the numbering, you know, on a table and then taped them up a little bit. Um, yep. Yep. Um, so these go in like 100 year increments. So, you know, for, for some of history, you can get away with 100 year increments. And I've got events here that are basically the events from the Veritas Press history curriculum that we use. Um, so along the top of the wall is all of time in 100 year. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Um, all of time in 100 year increments. Now, you'll see here at the end, the last, you know, 500 years of history or so, um, there's a little blue and red stripe. I know it's hard to see, but there's a blue and red stripe running down for the last 500 years or so of history. And so what I've done is then I broke that out, that 500-year period starting over here, and I did um, that same period over again, but kind of like the zoomed-in view. So the, the marks here are than every 50 years, and they're much further apart as you can see, because once you get into the last 500 years of history, there are so many more events that you need to hit. Um, and as you can see, I haven't filled in a lot of events here, but um, so that's just a kind of a broad overview of our timeline. And there's Mr. Joseph out there eating some cookies. So again, two timelines. The top one is all of time in in 100-year increments close together, and the bottom one is the last 500 years in 50-year increments a lot further apart. Okay, so part two of the scope is the schoolroom, which is, I'm just going to be honest, it's a disaster right now. That's why I'm scoping on it. I'm just going to show you all the spaces, and if you have suggestions, please let me know because I'm just feeling really like kind of not um, enjoying this space right now. So this is our shelf by the back door where we keep the bins of the kids' dirt clothes, which means like the, you know, ripped up jeans and stuff that they put on to go play in the backyard. But then the top shelf inevitably is like, this stuff needs to go out to the shed. And then it just sits there and it never actually goes out to the shed. So that shelf is always overwhelmed with stuff. We have some coat hooks here um, that, you know, again, like everybody has like five coats there. Um, and this is the shelf where I've got the printer and the filing stuff that mommy also never gets around to, like those bins near the bottom there, theoretically are things I need to file. This is my desk, which I never ever use because it always looks like this. It's always piled with junk. Um, underneath it are drawers that have craft things, tape and special scissors and stickers and stuff like that. Bulletin board again, which I never use. Um, yeah, I just put coats in the attic in the off season, Jenny. So I don't know. It's not a fantastic system, but that's what we've been doing. Okay, now we have a ton of board games, which I love, and I don't have any interest in getting rid of our board games. Um, and this is probably two-thirds of our collection. We have another bunch in the, uh, in the living room. Yeah, so we are a big, big board game family. Um, so obviously the whole top of this bookcase, the top shelf of every bookcase and then sometimes the second shelf down on each bookcase has board games on it. So if you ever want to know about board games, ask me. Um, this shelf over here is almost entirely stuff aside from the board games. 
almost entirely stuff that I had when I was a teacher, when I was a classroom teacher. Yeah, well, I wish we were neighbors for lots of reasons, Jenny. That would be fun. Um, and, you know, so much of this stuff I don't use. Now, the, the bottom few shelves are more like real books, like real books about science and history and things, which the kids read a lot. But a lot of the teacher books I don't use. I mean, I'm just not photocopying science workbooks and stuff like that. I know, Mary. I know. Your scope's got me really inspired. And I just keep, like, right from my teaching years, which I'm watching your scopes, and I'm, like, cheering you on, like, yeah, totally, get rid of that stuff. If you don't use it, why would you keep it? And then I look at my shelves, and I can't do the same thing because I look at them and I think, okay, so here's one thing. I know this is really corny, but I'll be like, but I have a whole set of them. And I have one for every math subject in second grade. So why would I get rid of them? Or how could I break up the set, right? That's silly, I know, but that's what I'm thinking. So I really need to be more hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, and we are too. And honestly, I mean, I just, I'm not, you know, like when we had the Abeka math curriculum, our problem was too much math work. So it wasn't like I needed to go and um, photocopy some more math things. Okay, do you need another cookie? I'll be right there. Um, anyway, so this is the shelf of school stuff, and it's got, you know, how things go. Like, you you have an organizational system, and then you get more stuff, and you're just stuffing it in everywhere. Um, so there's just homeschool stuff shoved in, and a lot of this, like those blue notebooks, the binders there, we don't even use that binder system anymore, but it's still there. The white basket has stuff that I don't use anymore. Like, I just really need to go through this. Over here, this shelf drives me crazy because this is another place where we just stuff things in when we don't have space for them. Yeah, it's insane. It's like we started out with a system and then we would get new things. And instead of, like my mom's rule for us as kids was, if you get something, you can't put it on the shelf until you've taken off something else. You know, like make a space for it. And I've not been good about that. So it's just you get something and you just shove it into the shelf. You just make a place for it. So, you know, and some of the things are tricky, like, my daughter's knitting supplies, she's got, lots of people have given her yarn when they knew that she was a knitter, which is fantastic, but then it's constantly always kind of dripping off the shelf and overflowing from the containers that we have for it. Um, so I don't know, and I'm, I've debated, you know, maybe we could get like some things from Ikea that have doors on the front of them, like those big kind of, they're meant to be wardrobes, but um, you know, you can put shelving units in them. My parents just got some for their they have kind of like a large walk-through way that has a space off to the side. And so they basically made like sort of like a built-in closet out of these IKEA wardrobes side by side. I know, I feel like I'm not sure if doors would be good or if doors would mean that I would just cram more stuff in and shut the doors because nobody would see it. So anyway, so this is our TV cabinet. And, you know, again, like people just pile stuff there. Like you can see there's DVDs laying out without – being in the case. This is the kid's bookshelf. We started using the library so much more and I didn't really come up with a good system of where to keep the library stuff. So you can see it's all kind of haphazardly piled here, which of course, whenever there's a pile, means that it's an automatic magnet for people to just dump more junk on top of. So there's papers and craft projects and other things that aren't even library materials, but this looked like such an inviting mess. Why not add a little bit more to it? So that's the schoolroom. So that is my challenge. And to be quite honest with you, I'm going to be doing absolutely nothing with it this week because we have Vacation Bible School and um, weekly cleanup of the room by the kids. Yeah, you know, they're pretty good at um, they're pretty good at straightening, honestly. Like daily we come in and we clean the room and they put stuff away. But the problem is like I'm, I'm the bottleneck, right? So I'm the one who needs to decide like, okay, we just got this new thing and how are we going to store it now? Where are we going to put it? What's going to be the new system? And because mommy is the bottleneck, then it's not happening. So the stuff that they can do, sorry, I'm giving the baby a cookie. Um, the stuff that they can do, they're pretty good at doing. Um, oh, another thing that I kind of love and hate is that we have this pile over here of stuff. Yeah, it's fine, Jenny. Um, so we've got a couple of card tables. We've got our school table. We've got the play yard for the baby. This box here is a whiteboard. Um, so... That kind of used to be a good space when we had just the school table and it would lean up against the wall and it was out of the way of the chalkboard. The kids could still get to the chalkboard, um, but there's just too much stuff in that pile now and I don't have really another good space to store those things. So anyway, these are just some of the challenges that I'm going to have to work on when I start organizing the schoolroom. But like I said, 
not this week. It's going to have to be next week because Mommy knows herself well enough to know that when Vacation Bible School is going on, I am not going to come home in the afternoon with the energy and the motivation to reorganize a disaster of a schoolroom. And I think, I, Mary, I know you did this fantastic, like, organize the whole house all at once because everything was all interconnected. I probably am not going to be able to manage that. So I'm just going to have to do one little section at a time, and we just might have to have piles sitting, waiting for the next piece um, before I can get to that. But anyway, this is the before, and hopefully sometime in the next three years, I'll get back to you with an after. So thanks, guys. Catch you later.